Welcome to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. <laughs> Dell challenges the status quo, questions everything, and empowers you to return to your core beliefs to make your life better. If you're ready to hear the truth and get your roadmap to the lifestyle you really want, the next hour will change your life. And now, your host, self-made millionaire, national award-winning investor of the year, CEO and founder of Lifestyles Unlimited, Del Wamsley. Welcome to the Del Wamsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Wamsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Well, my friends, financial freedom has been severely, severely interrupted as of the last two days. Just a few days ago... There was a bipartisan bill passed in the Senate for what they call infrastructure. How big? $1.2 trillion. I remember when the entire budget deficit was a trillion dollars and we thought the world was going to end. And now they pass one bill. This is after passing trillions of dollars worth of stuff during COVID. Now they pass 1.2. But wait, in the middle of the night, at 4 a.m. in the morning, when no one was around, The United States Senate just passed a bill, which they're calling the second infrastructure bill, the Democrats are, which is really a gigantic pork barrel spending bill for $3.5 trillion. So, folks, who pays for all this stuff? Well, of course, we do. So we are, at this moment, $4.6 trillion poorer than we were yesterday. Now, that's hard for any of you to rationalize. That's probably like an additional three or $400,000 per person in the U.S. Probably means nothing to most of you. You'll never see it. You'll never feel it, you think. But it will affect you. And it will affect everybody. And what I'm here today to say is it's going to affect poor people more than it's going to affect rich people. You know, Biden said that, you know, there will be no taxes for anybody who makes less than $400,000. And I'm here to dispute that with him and everybody else out there. That's a Democrat who would like to call in and try to argue this point because you know you can't. It's insane. It's absolutely a mistake. And it's a mistake that just you guys socially voted in. You voted the Democrats in. And I say you because I don't vote for those types of things. And you voted them in. And you allowed them to take control. And now they've got control. And they're doing what they want to do, which is spend everybody else's money but their own. For everything, every pet peeve, every pork barrel project they could ever come up with. So I'm not going to get into the argument about the actual politics behind it or about what the bill is spending on. None of that's relevant to us. What's relevant to us is you have just become poorer. The government has just decided to make you poorer. Now, let's talk about why that is in the short run, the medium term, and the long run. In the short run is inflation. That money getting out into our society has already started massive inflation. Four or five percent inflation, highest it's been since Jimmy Carter. And that was before we had this five trillion dollar influx of new spending. So there's nobody that can say that the inflation is going to stop. So who does inflation hurt? It hurts the poor and the middle class. It doesn't hurt rich people. Rich people don't care what a you know a loaf of bread costs or milk costs or eggs cost or diapers for their kids. Rich people don't care what a car costs or what it costs to put gas in the car. They don't care about any of those things. None of that means anything to them. I mean, I just had uh, a a giant freeze here in Texas. I spent over $100,000 just pulling out dead plants, putting back in new dead plants in my mansion. So do I care if bread goes from $3 to $4? And I don't even eat bread. They said, well, what about gas? I go, well, I don't drive that much. I don't go anywhere. You guys have to get up and go to work every day. I don't. So I only drive when I need to go somewhere. And the difference between $2 gas and 4 or $5 gas per gallon 
is pretty much irrelevant to me. Now, I'm not saying this to be arrogant. I'm not saying it to impress you. I'm, not, I'm saying it, guys, you did this to yourselves. You voted this nonsense in, right? And you can vote it back out if you want. But the reality is it probably won't come back out because once they set these spending things in place, it's very hard to stop them, almost impossible. And you've done it to yourself. So the next question is, well, what do we do? And the answer is, you're either a part of them, you're part of the problem, you're part of the solution. And the problem are people at the bottom that don't have any money that are asking for free stuff. And so as they want all this free stuff, the government gives it to them to buy their votes. Hence, they play the game. The Democratic giveaway free for your vote game. Now, here's what's happened. You are going to find that multiple things are going to happen. This bill not only has the action of adding a lot of money to the system, which will create inflation, massive inflation. It also has the problem of a lot of new regulation, the Green New Deal stuff that's in there. It also has the woke society stuff in there. More regulations about who you can hire and who you can't hire, what you can pay them, what you can't pay them, who can get into a college and who can't get into a college. This woke stuff has gone crazy and it's taken away all of your rights, taken away your family's rights. Your kids will never live in the same world we lived in, where anybody could work from the bottom all the way to the top. And I know the Democrats don't want you to believe that. I know poor people don't want you. I've seen a couple different shows already on TV where they're saying it's the American lie, not the American dream. No one ever comes up from the bottom. That is BS. People come up from the bottom all the time and every race. I mean, let's just say Oprah Winfrey, for example. And there's thousands and thousands of successful people that are white, black, brown, whatever. America is a place where you can strap it on and make it. But they don't want you to believe that because they want you to believe that it's unfair and that they have to be in control and have power over everybody to make it fair. But let's get practical. What is that going to do? That's going to take freedoms away from you, and that's going to take the entrepreneurial spirit out of our country. So you are going to lose jobs. Why are you going to lose jobs? Because the jobs won't be there, because the entrepreneurs won't be there to start the businesses to give you the jobs. So you're going to lose jobs. The government can't create jobs. The government destroys jobs. And so you're going to have less opportunity to have a job. Not to mention, if they keep coming back with this COVID thing, they're going to shut everything back down again for COVID. You're broke. You are right now broker today than you ever were. And I question to you is this. Do you want to keep being that broke, controlled, manipulated person that gets up every day and goes to work and runs on this little squirrel wheel until one day they say your squirrel wheel is taken away? You go to your cubicle every day and slave away until they say we're closing your cubicle down? I mean, it's bad enough that you were willing to live your whole life running in the squirrel wheel or going to the cubicle, but now they're telling you, no, we're not going to let you have this cubicle. Or the squirrel wheel. You're just going to have to starve. Or go on welfare. Or go on unemployment. And let us give to you what we want you to have. We will dole out to you what we feel you deserve. While we go to our lavish parties. Meet and hobnob with the richest people in the world. You're going to stay at home with a COVID mask on. Getting the handouts we give you. That's what they've done with these bills. Because the bills are more than just spending. They're spending on something, and the something they're spending on is the total destruction of our society, as we know it. We'll be right back with the Del Wamsley Radio Show.
Welcome back. Now here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to Del Wamsley Radio. So today we're $5 trillion uh, poorer than we were just yesterday. And uh, nobody really knows what that means. I'm sure there's no way to realize it. But I'll tell you this. If you start to think about it, you have to decide, are you on the side of inflation or on the side of non-inflation? Inflation is going to eat away at all the poor people at everything they try to buy. That's going to kill them, right? So that's going to be very, very one-sided that way. It's going to eat away at middle-class people that are trying to feed their kids and put their kids in nice clothes and buy them cars and, and gas and food and all that. So the middle class are going to get hit. But the middle class are going to get hit also by taxes, and they're going to get hit by rules and laws and regulations of this new woke society stuff. So all this is going to happen to you because these bills pass. At the same time, what's going to happen to rich people? Nothing. They're going to raise the taxes and the tax rates on rich people. But rich people don't pay taxes. Why? Because almost everything they own and how they own it is hedged. It's hedged. Now, unless they change the hedges to where they start taxing capital gains at the same rate they tax earned income, because rich people don't have earned income. They have passive income. In passive income, you don't pay Social Security and your Medicare on it, and you pay a much lower income tax rate on it. So, as they say they're increasing the taxes, they're increasing the taxes on somebody who... People that have earned income, so football players, basketball players, baseball players, guys that make millions are going to pay more taxes. But people that don't have that kind of income, rich people don't have a job. That's funny. I tried to get a loan. I this deal. I'm putting a new um, generator on my house, an 80 kW generator, because I have a really large house, and the little 25,000 watt generator won't relight the whole house. You know, when the lights go off, the generator comes on. It's not big enough to run the whole house. So I want an 80 kW because it runs the whole house. So the thing costs like 45,000 bucks. And the guy goes, hey, we got this deal where um, you can get, um, what was it? 18 months, no interest financing. As long as you pay each month a certain amount. And at the end of 18 months, it's all paid off. You pay no interest at all. I said, well, man, that's dumb not to take that. I said, I obviously could pay this. It's like 45000 bucks. I can afford to pay this. Right, you check right now. But I said, who would be dumb enough to pass up 18 months free interest and pay it out over time with no interest? And the guy said, absolutely. That's exactly what I said. I said, okay, fine. Sign me up. So we go through the credit reporting thing and put all the information into the computer. And it goes to a bank. And this bank is one that I have over a million dollars in. And I have banks... Like I said, I have like 27 banks, something like that. I keep forgetting the number, but it's a lot. And each one of them has over a million bucks in it, right? So we're talking about the situation where this bank has my name and a million bucks or more of my money in it, right? And so we fill out this application. The guy calls up and says, okay, what can we get for this? Can we get the 45000 for this guy? He goes, no, we can only give him 25000 And uh, <laughs> why? I go, well, we need to see his income tax returns. I go, dude, you don't understand. I don't give out my income tax return. I said, do you understand? I don't have a job. I don't know if he goes, I want to see your W-2s. I go, we don't have W-2s. We make money by owning businesses and companies. We don't make money by having a job and a W-2. The guy goes, well, I would have to see there. I can't give you more credit. So the guy that was doing the generator thing said to me, don't worry about it. It's 45,000. They give you 25. We'll lend you, we'll just forget about the rest. You put half down and we'll take the rest when you finish. And so I ended up getting the same result, actually better, because now I only pay payments on 25000 bucks. But the point I'm making is, is that this bank, even with a million bucks of my money in their bank, with a credit report, pulling my credit report up and seeing that I have tens and tens and tens of accounts filled with money and lines of credit and checking accounts and businesses, right? That's all in my credit report. Couldn't lend me more than 25000 bucks. So do you understand the world really doesn't understand how rich people make their money? They don't. They have no idea. And so, you know, when somebody says, well, Donald Trump doesn't pay any taxes, that's illegal. It's not illegal. It's the way the tax code is set up. If you don't have a job, you don't get paid W-2 income, and you earn all of your income passively, there are ways to avoid paying taxes because there are tax loopholes that are set up for passive income. Period. 
And so when they raise the tax rates and you look at my tax return, it says, okay, how much tax do you owe? And it says zero. Well, zero at 45% is not any more than zero at 42%. Does that make sense? It just, it doesn't mean anything. But it means something to you. If you make four hundred, five hundred thousand, and you go at five hundred thousand, it goes from forty-two to forty-five. That means something to you. But then there's all kinds of other taxes that are going to be thrown in. They're th- talking about taxing people for driving. They want to put a meter on your car and tax you for the number of miles you drive. That's a green new deal thing. If they do that, then who gets hurt? All the people that go to work every day. I don't go to work every day. It's not going to hurt me. It's going to hurt you. That's only the tip of it. What they're taking away from you is one thing. Let's look at the other side. What are they not giving you? Well, they're making all of your assets, except your personal residence, go down in value. All your cash, your 401k, your IRAs, which you thought you worked so hard to save up that $400,000. Well, that 401k is now a 201k because you've inflated it by 50%. The buying power of your 401k by the time you retire might be zero. I mean, not zero, but it's going to be much, much lower because of this inflation over the next five to 10 years. And if you're in the last 10 years of your retirement span, you're in trouble. You're in big, big trouble because your cash is going to be worth nothing in your retirement years. The money you have saved will be worth very little in your retirement years. And you have no way to back it up. I've got a couple emails here today. We're going to talk about some of this stuff. And I just want you to see this, but before we get to the emails, I want to just cover this, make it very clear to you. Listen, guys, if you owned assets, assets go up in value because of inflation. So if you own, let's say, $1 million worth of assets and everything's going up by 5%, your assets going up by 5% a year. So maybe your cash which is only $100,000 or $200,000 or $300,000 goes down by 5% because of inflation. But if your million-dollar asset goes up by 5%, you're better off. The more assets you own, the better off you are with inflation. The less assets you own, the worse off you are. So what do you think I've been doing for the last 12 months? Buying assets. I told you, in the last 12 months, I bought six more pieces of real estate. Big ones. Lots of money. Why? Because I saw this coming. And not only that, the more assets I have, the more income I have. But with real estate, with depreciation to cover the income, it's not taxable. Got to make a decision, folks. We'll be right back with the Del Wamsley Radio Show. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to Del Wamsley Radio Show. We're going to shift now over to a couple of emails that I wanted to answer today. I had promised people I'd answer them. Also, um, I think they might play into some of the concepts we've been talking about today, if I can shadow um, some parallels to the two. Uh, The first one reads here, I've been listening to your radio show and it all makes sense to me. Wonder if I have enough funds to qualify to join. As you say, I'm tired of living a life of quiet desperation. I would like to have passive income to improve my finances. Okay. So there's a statement, right? I'm tired of it. I'd like to fix it. Moves on and says, I have about 80,000 in a 401k. I'm planning to retire from my job at the end of this year. And those funds would be available to transfer to an IRA. Is it possible to use the funds as a self-directed IRA and invest with lifestyles? I also have a small savings account. All right, before I answer that question, I want to go down and read you the last paragraph, which just blows me away. I'm 74 this year. And when I retire, my income will be Social Security plus a small yearly 
RMD, which is required minimum distribution from my current IRA with an investment firm. Now, folks, how sad is this to be 74 years old and still working? And when they retire, all they're going to have is Social Security and a small minimum distribution from their IRA. Now we go back up to the question. I have about 80000 in four hundred one k and I'm planning to retire from my job at the end of this year. And those funds would be available to transfer to an IRA. Okay, first of all, there's absolutely no reason for you to transfer those funds to an IRA, ma'am. If you take those funds and put them in an IRA, then the money in the IRA, no matter if it earned anything or not, you can't get. If you take the money you earned out of the IRA, you have to pay taxes on it. So it doesn't make any sense at all to do that. If you pull the money out, you're going to be in a 10% tax bracket. You're going to get about pay to 8000 in taxes, but you're going to end up with $72,000. With that $72,000, you should be able to go to buy anywhere from three to four houses, rental houses that could pay you anywhere from four to $500 monthly cash flow and add an extra sixteen to hundred dollars to $2,000 a month onto your passive income from your Social Security and your IRA. Okay. Uh, what you have to understand is putting the money back in the self-directed IRA doesn't help you because you don't earn anything from the self-directed IRA. If you go out there and buy real estate and you get the cash flow and the cash flow is covered by the depreciation, you're going to get tax-free income. You put it in your IRA and you pull it out as income, you're going to pay taxes on it. So it makes absolutely no sense at all to put your money into an IRA. I've been telling people this for 30 years, the people that know me, the people that are retired, the people that are wealthy from what we do all know this and have gotten rid of their IRAs and their 401ks. They're useless. Okay. Now, this lady has to be very careful because she's 74 years old. And in the situation that she has this 80000 in the 401k, let's say she delivers it to the IRA. We'll say she transfers to the IRA. The thing you have to understand is that she still doesn't have the $80,000. The $80,000 is still in a qualified fund. And for her to use any of that $80,000, she has to pay taxes on it when it comes out. Now, what can she do with the $80,000? Inside the IRA, she cannot go out there and do the kinds of things you can do with the money out of the IRA. In the IRA, she can invest in syndications, but she can't get the big bang for the bucks you could get for something like a rent house, where you could go in and use massive leverage, borrow the money to buy the house, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, at 74, she may not want to do all that anyway. And the answer to her question then in the short answer is, yes, if you had an IRA, you could invest the IRA into a syndication. But the problem with that is if the syndicator actually knows what he's doing, which most syndicators don't, is that if you earn money into your IRA, he's supposed to charge you taxes on that money that goes into the IRA that has anything to do with leverage. In other words, an IRA can make money from an investment, but it can't make money from a leveraged investment without paying taxes on the leveraged part of the investment. No one will tell you that, even if you run into syndicators. They don't even know that most of the time. And so they're doing something that's wrong, whatever. The bottom line is that you're probably better off to take the money out. Now, I wouldn't take all 80000 out. I'd go find me one good rent house deal and buy that and take out what I need. And then when the next good deal comes along, take that out when I need, so on and so forth. Now, also realize that she's being required to take out minimum distributions from the IRA. So the money can't stay in the IRA much longer anyway. What you do with these minimum distributions, you look up your life expectancy on a life expectancy chart that's put out each year. And then you divide what your age minus life expectancy, that number of years divided into your IRA and you have to take that much out every year. There's just an example. Now, how does this new law affect her in this situation? Tax rates are going up. Now, he said he won't raise the tax rates on people in under $400,000. We'll see. We haven't seen any of the details of the plan yet, but tax rates are definitely going up. So if you're sitting here now and you're young and putting money into a 401k and IRA, you're better off to pay the tax rates now than to put them off because you're going to be in a higher and higher and higher tax bracket the older you get. The more money you make, the more money you have in your IRA you have to get out, or 401k you have to get out, the more taxes you're going to have to pay. All right, the next one says, 
Thank you for all the help in the past. I know that you don't like 403Bs or 457s or 401Ks or IRAs, and you generally frown upon them. I want to know if you would consider this an exception. I have $1.1 million in combined accounts. I can access 580000 next month when I retire from my school district and start a private school. My state tax rate in Virginia is 5.75%. My wife and daughter are committed to moving to Texas within three to four years. Would investing the 580 be prudent with the idea of moving to Texas and then cashing out? Or would you suggest paying the state tax as well and moving on? Okay, so the idea here is this. He's going to get this 580000 He can roll it over to an IRA and invest it in something for three or four years and let it just sit there and then wait till he moves to Texas and then take it out because they don't have state income tax. He's just trying to avoid the state income tax. That's all he's trying to do. You're going to pay the tax anyway somewhere along the line. So I said, let's say that you pay the tax and take the money and wisely invest it. 580000 at a 575 state income tax is 33350 This leaves you about $546,000 minus federal income taxes, which you have to pay sometime anyway. Now, with whatever's left over, I don't know your tax bracket, you can invest wisely and double your money every two to four years on good deals. And I gave you an example of one I got into just the other day that I did that. So let's say that you end up with 400000 after tax. Double that in two years, you have eight hundred. Double that again, you have $1.6 million in four years. This makes it a great idea to do that now. On the downside, let's say it takes four years to double your money. Then you end up with only $800,000 with the money out of the 403B so you can use it. Still not a bad place to be compared to waiting four years to start investing. So think about this. You're in a situation, you've got $580,000. You're going to have to pay taxes on one way or the other. If you get it out now, instead of waiting for the four years before you move, by the time you move, you could have between $800,000 and $1.6 million and be out and paid the taxes off on the $580,000. Or you could wait, and whether or not the investment you bought inside the IRA went up or down or whatever, it's still going to be 580 plus or minus a little bit. You're going to have to pay the taxes anyway when you come out the other side. It just doesn't make sense. This one here, I'm 100% for do it now and get your money working for you as soon as possible. Next one, hello. I had to share with you, because of you and David Fisher presenting us the map, we hit a milestone today. We surpassed $2 million invested passively. We started our real estate investing in 2010 with single families. In 2015, we jumped into an 18-unit IRO apartment complex, which opened our eyes. IRO means independent owner. We did it by themselves. Our eyes to passive investing. We did our first passive in 2016, uh, and today we hit a crazy $2 million worth of passive investments. We live off this income and small teachers' retirement. Thank you, thank you, thank you. P.S. We'll never be able to thank you enough. There you go, my friends. That's the answer to what you need to do. We'll be right back with Del Wamsley Radio Show. Some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to Del Wamsley Radio Show. I want to cover a uh, question I got that is rather interesting. It says, uh, Del, I talk about 401ks as bad investments, savings accounts, CD, stock market. Why don't you ever mention annuities? I've been listening to your radio show for years, but for some reason you don't touch the subject. Why is it? By the way, you are my mentor, and I've got nine rental properties. I'm just pondering the thought. I'm 61 years old and now, and you're 65. What do you do when you're 80 and may not want to get out the property management and owing real estate? I just have an annuity that may pay 7% a year with no input anymore with the owning the rentals. All right, here's, here's the reality. The problem about annuities, there's so many different types, and there's so many different ways that they work that I can't go into them in an effective way, because I don't know enough about them, because there's so many different ones, and they work so many different ways. So no matter what I said about them, somebody would come back and say, well, that's not true, based on you could do this, or that, or whatever. Here's the real problem with them. When you give your money to an insurance company, and basically that's what it is, you're giving your money to an insurance company, they now have your money. It's almost like a savings account. There are ways 
some ways to get some of that money back, if not all of it, but they have your money. They're willing to pay you an interest rate on that money because they're able to take that money and go earn a lot more money with it. And because they can earn a lot more money with it than what they're paying you, they're willing, very willing to pay you an interest rate of some kind on that money. All right? I've always wanted to be the person that was making the lot of money and paying interest to somebody else that was lending me the money so that I could make a lot of money and they took an interest rate. Now, if you get to be 74 years old, you've got lots of options. You can get into passive real estate deals. You can buy commercial real estate where it's a triple net lease and there's nothing you do. You do nothing. They send you a check in the mail. Triple net means net, net, net means you don't pay taxes, insurance, maintenance, repair, nothing. You own it. They rent it from you. They take care of it. That's another possibility. So you've got passive investing through syndications. You've got triple net leases. And, of course, you've got annuities. You're going to have to look at the different ones and see what you think. I don't like giving my money to somebody else. I don't like an insurance company having my money, getting rich off my money, when I think I can have my money somewhere else. Even if I do a commercial deal, I own the building. And with all this inflation coming, what's going to happen? That building is going to become worth a lot more because of the inflation. What isn't going to happen is that that cash flow coming out of the annuity isn't going to go up. It's going to go down in actual value. Now, having said that with me, I have a guest today, and uh, this is our national presenter, Mr. Lee Reeves. Lee, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Dell. Appreciate you having me on again. Well, we like to have you on every once in a while so we can keep in touch with what's going on nationally. What do we have uh, going on that you want to talk about today? Well, I appreciate that. I mean, yeah, we have a lot going on. I mean, there is so much. We've got Expo coming up at the beginning of next month. But uh, in advance of that, we are rocking and rolling across the country. We've got free workshops that just show you the five ways that we make money in real estate, and the seven principles that we use to provide for our families and run our businesses. You can register for those at lifestylesunlimited.com. They're conducted by live stream. We've got several coming up. I'm going to mention two. One's on Saturday, August 14th at noon Central Time, and the other's Tuesday, August 17th at 6.30 in the evening Central Time. So you've got lots of choices about how to connect. Dell, we've got case studies coming up. Uh, the next one is next Thursday, and it's a, it's a Central Texas one. It's out of Central Texas. It's at 6 p.m. Central Time. And the two-day financial freedom seminar, I did a count. We have six this month. So there's really no way that you can find a time that doesn't work for you. We've got a two-day this coming weekend, August 14th and 15th. We've got a four-part financial freedom seminar starting next Tuesday. I'm going to be teaching that one. It's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday in the evenings. So put the kids uh, down to bed and, and, and log into that. And then we've got a, another two-day in Central Texas. That's in person and online. And we have started to do two days across the country again, which is really exciting. And uh, we've got two at the end of the month, on the 28th and the 29th of August. One is in Richmond, Virginia. We have a big uh, group over there in Richmond. And also in the Bay Area in California, uh, also a big group out there. So look for those, register for those on GiveMeTotalFreedom.com. The promo code is Dell, D-E-L, GiveMeTotalFreedom.com. And then I just want to mention a couple other things, uh, Dell. We've got some meetups. We've got in-person meetups across the country in Tampa on August 14th, uh, in Detroit on Thursday, August 19th. And then we've got a virtual meetup. This is really cool, actually. A virtual meetup in Southern California. That's Thursday, August 26th. And I love the topic of it. It's how to get the most out of the Lifestyles Unlimited Expo, which is going to be in Irving in the DFW area on September 3rd. And I'm excited about that because there's so much going on. And so many buy-and-hold real estate investors doing what we teach that are there, that's going to be a great thing because it'll kind of give you a chance to to make the most of your experience there. And then, of course, we've got educational road trips. And I'll just leave you with this. It's August. Everything is hot right now, including real estate. So now's the time for you to get out and get involved in Lifestyles Unlimited 
so that you can be part of what we're doing all over the country. So the expo is actually September 3rd for the bus tour, and actually September 3rd and September 4th. I just want to make that clear to people. It's Friday and Saturday of that weekend. So you don't want to miss that. It's going to be an incredible one. Every year, anywhere from three to 5,000 people get together nationwide to uh, share their ideas and beliefs. And also we have training and, and breakout sessions and of course, our big presentation, and it's just an incredible deal. People meeting and networking, it's the best place to be. Lee, thanks for coming on, buddy. I look forward to seeing you there you at the Expo. Yeah. And the rest of you, just remember, it's not the money, it's the lifestyle. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow. The information and opinions you hear on the Del Wamsley Radio Show are those of the host, Del Wamsley, his guests, and his callers, and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this station, its affiliates, its management, or advertisers. The Del Wamsley Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Del Wamsley Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.